For years, Dr. Ayman Abaguda has watched his home country be ripped apart by civil war. Last week, chemical attacks killed more than 80 Syrian civilians. And then, as you know, just before the weekend, the United States fired those cruise missiles at Syria in response to the chemical attacks. The strikes hit a government-controlled air base in central Syria. For more now, we have Dr. Abaguda in studio in Regina. Good morning to you. Good morning, Sheila. So after the developments of the past few days, how are you feeling? I feel better a little bit. Uh, that is, it's funny that you're happy that a foreign country hitting your country, home country, and you are happy about it. Simply because that government, that regime, and supporters from Russian, Iranian, uh, Hezbollah militia, their, long, their agenda is against the country and its people. So uh, this hit is a little bit late, but better than nothing. We should have been done a few years ago when Mr. Obama had his red line, which is faded away, mm. as everybody knows. So I think that was a, a good message to everyone. And although Mr. Trump is unpredictable, well, as that's, say, that's yeah. the concern, right? Yeah. And I wonder how concerned you are about that and about, the, and about his motivation. Yes. I mean, this no matter what's the motivation, what is done is, is right. But we got so much used to the wrongdoing and living with it, accepting it, looking to the other side, uh, finding an excuse not to, in particular for Syria. Imagine when you have a few Kurds or Yazidis or et cetera, the whole world couldn't sleep that night. Well, a human life is a human life is a human life. And you just cannot say, well, this is more expensive than others. We'll pay the price later on. The humanity will pay the price when they start to make a difference in the values of the human lives, sooner or later. Going back to, to Syria, that hasn't been, shouldn't have been done a long time ago. Assad did not stop. Uh, let me back off a little bit. Well, three years ago, when he used this chemical uh, weapons and every, the whole world said there is enough is enough, we'll hit you if you don't. It's funny thing that you ask the criminal to hand over the, uh, we, uh, the crime weapon and say you are free after that. Mm. So we're given that you can kill your people, but not with chemicals. And they start to use this uh, barbaric way of the explosive barrels. And one of them in the tweet uh, joked that 50 cruise missiles cost $100 million, killed 97 or 9 people and partially destroyed that uh, airport, mm. uh, the you know, military base. Mm -hmm. And one barrel cost $10,000, kill 100 people. Mm -hmm. So that really, the Americans should really have been more economical in their ways. It's a funny way, but this is a reality. Yeah. It's a reality, so yeah. Assad keeps killing them. Yeah. Just to give you an idea, that from the same base, the planes took over again after 24 hours and bombarded areas, punishing them with the white phosphorus which is prohibited, you know, internationally prohibited. So they, this is really, this regime is saying, I have a backup of Russia. I have a backup of the West in in indirect way. Yeah. They, in, in, and then then I'll do whatever you like. Well, so they you, need a few lessons from that. And you've, got, and you've got Rex Tillerson now talking about regime change and how that needs an international agreement, right, about about regime change. How do you see that happening, especially without, without Russia's cooperation? I do believe that the Russian, the, the American, seriously speak, the Russian will listen. In when Mr. Al Hariri, the ex Prime Minister of Lebanon, was assassinated by what I believe was believed by many people, Syrian backed Hezbollah, he was prime, ex Prime Minister of Lebanon. And I think the, 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 the Western, the, the West gave Assad ultimatum you leave by end of March. I forgot what year was it, about seven, eight years ago or more. And he left mid of March when he knew they are serious, he was serious. When every week you have an American or European diplomat saying, well, uh, Assad departure of, of power is not, you know, essential. Yeah, what it's kind of wishy-washy, right? What, it's... Yeah, you are not sending the right message. Yeah. And they were the Americans. They told everyone, hands off, I'll look after it. And they did not. They managed the conflict, did not allow anyone to end it. 
So now if there is a change, they yeah. want to finish it, end it with yeah. a political, well, if they are how, truly, how, how do you go about that, in your opinion? How do you go about that regime we, change? I, anyone is better than Assad. Anyone is better But how than, do you get them out? How do you get them to go? Very simple. If they, um, first of all, Hezbollah, they can go and bombard Hezbollah, a terrorist organization. And they can bombard the Iran or support the opposition. Support the opposition. Let them give them why you are preventing them from getting even quality weapons to match or not to match. Some able to defend themselves and defeat the Syrian regime. Simply, they say, because we need the puppet government, we need mm. to be there. So it's really, it's a very dirty game there. But yeah. at the end, you have close to 500,000 people killed, half of the country being displaced, and still thinking about political solution to excellent all these mercurial terms. But do you think those days are done now? I'm not sure. But what I'm saying, if they real well, then you will see outcome. Yeah. What are, what are you if if they do get him to go, if there is an international will and they do get him to go, what are your concerns for what happens after that? Um, of course, there will be concern because the uh, the the Syrian uh, regime let those terrorist uh, extremists, which later on became an ISIS, they and flourished, others, and they flourished because they allowed them to flourish. Yeah. And many believe, and I am one of them. That is, the Americans and the others want them to also. They did not really, who can tell you, I saw bin Laden feeding the chicken, and they didn't see them leaving from Iraq to Raqqa for three or 400 kilometers with the missiles. And you don't hit them when they, you know, when ISIS came into uh, existence, all this. So you think there is something doesn't make sense. Sometimes they can see, you know, the, ne the needle in the haystack, mm -hmm. and then suddenly they cannot see a big things, etc. So if there is a will, I, someone will pull the plug on ISIS, and really if they put hands on the serious and honest people, and there is many of them on the ground there, they don't, uh, you know, tie their arms, there will be some. And by the way, there are many people who in Syria, but the, the, nobody is listening to them, who wants really to have secular regime after the Assad. Hmm. All of them interested because we believe then people let them choose and uh, later on. So this is, I think I am optimistic about it if there's a serious well. All right. Thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you.